There is some exciting news coming in from the world of science. Astronomers are optimistic that they have identified a planet which holds the most definite signs of life. Life on the strange planet K218b may be real, but there's something terrifying we didn't expect. The James Webb Space Telescope has spotted unmistakable signs of potential life, four life signatures to be exact, on a distant world 120 light years away. But there's a huge dangerous catch. Let's face the horrifying warning that everyone needs to watch out for. JWST, surprising discoveries on K218b. K218b is already making waves in the science world. It's got that red dwarf star nearby, and it's doing some pretty weird things that make it one of the hottest topics around for researchers. One of the big finds was methane and carbon dioxide. On their own, these gases are cool and all, but together, that's when things get interesting. Methane, water, and carbon dioxide all hanging out together is a pretty big clue that there's some kind of biology happening. But it doesn't stop there. James Webb Space Telescope also found something called dimethyl sulfide, or DMS for short. It's a big deal because on Earth, DMS only comes from living things, mostly algae. K218b might be hiding a secret that could change everything, and scientists are closing in on the answer. What does this exoplanet actually look like, though? That's a bit harder to figure out. Unfortunately, even the fancy JWST can't actually show us what the surface of these planets looks like. We don't have an exact image, no alien selfies, sorry. Instead, the telescope looks at light absorbed and emitted by the planet. Water and oceans, for instance, reflect light differently than forests or deserts. What we've got right now is a kind of light fingerprint from this world, which tells us there's probably a thick hydrogen atmosphere and tons of water. We can tell it's about eight and a half times bigger than Earth, which puts it in the class of planets scientists call high clean worlds. That's a fancy way of saying it's a big water-covered planet that's a bit warmer than ours, maybe like a giant greenhouse full of water. There's also a weird glow happening around WASP-76b that's been puzzling the astronomers. It's called the glory effect, and it happens when light scatters around particles like the mist you see glowing around mountains or clouds here on Earth. On WASP-76b, the light from its nearby star hits iron clouds, bounces off, and creates a kind of halo around the planet. Scientists think that the more we learn about these strange effects, the more we might have to reconsider some of our ideas about physics and the universe. Lately, with JWST showing us all these unexpected phenomena, some researchers are starting to wonder if our old physics even makes sense in this crazy alien jungle that is the universe. This exoplanet might just be the first real shot we have at finding actual life, real alien organisms, even if they're tiny and plant-like. At the same time, places like WASP-76b are showing us just how wild and unpredictable the universe can be. For every ocean-covered paradise, there's a planet out there raining iron we're just beginning to scratch the surface of what's out there. And it's becoming clearer that the universe is full of surprises, some hopeful, some bizarre, and all worth exploring. Stay tuned, because this is just the beginning. This exoplanet has really shaken things up for astronomers. It's almost like the universe decided to throw us a bone, hinting that life might not be as rare as we once thought. The red dwarf star it orbits, known as K218, isn't exactly the most welcoming host. Red dwarfs are known for their erratic behavior. Sometimes they flare up, sending out blasts of radiation. But even with that, the conditions of this world seem promising. The thick hydrogen atmosphere acts like a big protective blanket, shielding the planet from some of the worst effects of its star's tantrums. Plus with all that water, it could be the perfect environment for some hardy, resilient forms of life. If we zoom out a bit and think about what this means for our understanding of the universe, it's pretty mind-blowing. Just a few decades ago, we didn't even know there were planets around other stars. Now we're identifying planets that might be teeming with life. And the more we look, the more we realize that the universe is a lot weirder and a lot more diverse than we ever imagined. 
We're finding planets like WASP 76b that seem to break the rules. Places where iron rains from the sky or where temperatures are hot enough to melt metal. And then we've got places like this water world, which seem almost tailor-made for life. The idea of a planet covered entirely in water is something straight out of science fiction. But it's not just fiction anymore. This exoplanet might be a glimpse into what a water world actually looks like. A world without continents or mountains, just endless blue seas. And while we're still a long way from being able to visit such a place, the data we're getting from the JWST is the next best thing. It's showing us that these places are out there and they're not just barren rocks floating in space. They're dynamic, complex worlds that could be full of surprises. K218b keeps surprising scientists, raising new questions about what's happening there. Evidence of potential life. This world is a symbol of hope. It's a reminder that life might not be confined to this little blue dot we call home. The fact that we've found a planet that has all the right ingredients for life and that it's only 120 light years away suggests that the universe might be full of places like this. Places where life in one form or another has taken hold. And if there's one thing we've learned, it's that where there's water, there's a good chance that life could follow. The search for extraterrestrial life is really just beginning. We've got better telescopes, better instruments, and more data than ever before. And with every new discovery, we're learning that the universe is a lot more interesting than we could have possibly imagined. This exoplanet is just one of countless exoplanets out there. And if we've already found one that might have life, who's to say there aren't hundreds or even thousands more? The truth is, we don't know what's out there but we're finally getting close to finding out. In the coming years, scientists will continue studying this exoplanet and other planets like it. The goal is to get more precise measurements, understand the chemistry in those distant atmospheres, and maybe even identify more definitive signs of life. It's going to take time, and it's not always going to be easy, but the potential payoff is huge. Imagine waking up one day to find out that we're not alone that there's another world out there with oceans full of life, even if it's just simple microscopic algae. That would change everything we know about our place in the universe. But let's not forget that space exploration is full of ups and downs. Sometimes we think we found something amazing, only to discover later that it was a false alarm. It happened with Mars, and it could happen with this planet. Maybe the DMS and methane we're seeing are being produced by some weird, non-biological process that we don't understand yet. But even if that turns out to be the case, it won't be the end of the story. It'll just be another reminder that space is unpredictable, and we need to keep pushing forward, asking questions, and looking deeper. This exoplanet remains a mystery, a fascinating, tantalizing mystery that has captured the imaginations of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. It's a reminder that the universe is vast, full of possibilities, and still hiding countless secrets just waiting to be uncovered. And as we continue to explore, one thing is for sure, we're bound to find more wonders, more surprises, and maybe even more signs that we're not alone. It's an exciting time to be looking at the stars, and the discoveries we're making today are just the beginning of what's out there. First of all, space is vast, really vast. We're talking distances that are completely mind-boggling. This exoplanet isn't just next door, it's 120 light years away. That means even light, which is the fastest thing in the universe, takes 120 years to get here from there. Imagine sending a message and not getting a reply for over a century. So when JWST takes a peek at this distant world, it's catching super faint signals that have been on their way here for generations. These signals are so faint that they're practically drowning in all the other bright stuff floating around in space, especially the blinding light from its host star. JWST's job is like trying to see a firefly right next to a floodlight, and it's definitely not easy. Detecting signs of life isn't as simple as just finding a weird color in the atmosphere. We're talking about gases like methane that could mean something interesting is going on. The thing is, methane isn't exclusive to life. It can also come from things like volcanoes or chemical reactions that have nothing to do with living creatures. When JWST finds these gases, 
It's not like we're staring at alien cows grazing. We're seeing the ingredients, not the recipe, and it's up to us to figure out if there's anything cooking. Atmospheres are also tricky customers. Some planets, like this one, are covered in thick clouds. Those clouds can be a nightmare for us, blocking the light and making it hard to tell what's in the air. Plus, this planet's star, a red dwarf, has a bit of an attitude problem. Red dwarfs are known for their wild temper, throwing off flares and radiation. That's bad news for anything trying to live there because that radiation can tear apart an atmosphere or mess with the chemistry we're trying to figure out. It's like trying to study a lake while someone's throwing rocks into it. Let's say we actually detect something, like oxygen or methane. That's interesting, but it's still not a slam dunk for life. Both of these can be made by non-living things, and they can stick around a while if conditions are just right. To actually say there might be life, we need to see these gases in certain amounts and combinations that don't make sense unless there's a biological source. It's like if you walk into a room and smell fresh bread, it's possible someone baked it, but it could also just be an air freshener. We need more than just the smell. We need to know if there's a loaf in the oven. Even if all we find are signs of something geological instead of biological, that's still incredible. It's still telling us a story about a world far away. And maybe, just maybe, these new tools we're building will someday find the smoking gun, the unmistakable signal of something alive, breathing, and thriving on another planet. But until then, we're piecing together a very complex puzzle, and the picture is still pretty fuzzy. That's why discoveries like the one on this exoplanet are exciting, but also why they need to be taken with a grain of salt. Every time we point our telescopes at the sky, we're taking one more step toward answering that big question. Are we alone? And even if we don't find an answer right away, the journey itself is what keeps us looking up at the stars. It's about exploring the unknown and seeing just how far we can push our understanding. Who knows? Maybe someday that firefly next to the floodlight won't seem so hard to see after all. The gases on this world might mean something interesting is going on, and it's worth a closer look. The gases on K218b might mean something interesting is going on, and it's worth a closer look. Methane, dimethyl sulfide, and the promise of life. Space is so unimaginably big, and the challenges we face trying to explore it are just as immense. This planet is a fascinating case, and the signals we're getting are intriguing, but interpreting them correctly is a tough job. Imagine trying to read a book by a flickering candle from across a football field. That's what JWST is doing, except the book is 120 light years away, and there are other candles around trying to distract us. The data we get from telescopes like JWST are like puzzle pieces. Some fit together nicely, Others might be from a completely different box. What we're trying to do is to figure out which pieces belong to the puzzle we're interested in and whether they show us something that's more than just a beautiful but lifeless scene. One of the reasons this planet is particularly interesting is because it's in what scientists call the habitable zone of its star. The habitable zone is that sweet spot where conditions might be just right for liquid water to exist. And where there's water, there's at least a chance for life. But that's just the starting point. Being in the habitable zone doesn't mean life is a given, far from it. There are so many things that have to go right. A planet could be in the perfect spot, but still be completely hostile because of its atmosphere, radiation from the star, or lack of the right chemical ingredients. The signals we're picking up with JWST are telling us there might be molecules like methane and even dimethyl sulfide, which on Earth is often associated with life. But again, these are just signals, faint whispers from a distant world. Methane can be produced by living things, but also by non-living processes. Volcanoes can spew methane, and there are chemical reactions that can produce it as well. Dimethyl sulfide is a bit more interesting because here on Earth, it's mostly produced by biological activity, specifically by marine plankton. If dimethyl sulfide is really there, it would be a pretty strong hint but it's still not definitive proof. We have to be careful about jumping to conclusions. There have been many times in the history of space exploration when something looked like it could be proof of alien life, only to turn out to be something much more mundane. 
Take Mars, for example. Decades ago, scientists thought they saw canals on Mars, which led to wild speculation about intelligent beings. Those canals turned out to be just an optical illusion. More recently, there was excitement about methane on Mars and possible seasonal changes, but those signals are still being studied and they could very well have non-biological explanations. It's a reminder that when we're dealing with such faint signals from so far away, we need to keep an open but skeptical mind. The environment around this planet is another big part of the puzzle. It's orbiting a red dwarf star, which is different from our sun. Red dwarfs are smaller and cooler, but they're also known for being very active, especially when they're young. They can produce powerful stellar flares, huge bursts of radiation that can be devastating to any nearby planet's atmosphere. This radiation can strip away protective layers of the atmosphere or cause chemical reactions that make the conditions for life less favorable. This exoplanet is close enough to its star that it's likely being bombarded by this radiation, which complicates things. If there is life, it's got to be pretty tough and survive under those conditions. But let's not forget the potential. Imagine if this planet does have some form of life, maybe not advanced civilizations with cities and technology, but simple organisms that have adapted to thrive in a hydrogen-rich, radiation-bombarded environment. That would be astonishing. It would mean that life can exist in forms very different from what we have here on Earth, and that the universe is capable of supporting life in a wider variety of places than we ever thought possible. It would also mean that planets we might have previously written off as too weird could actually be worth another look. Then there's artificial intelligence, which is starting to play a key role in this search. The amount of data we get from telescopes like JWST is staggering. We're talking about millions of tiny signals, and hidden among them might be the telltale signs of life. AI algorithms can help sift through all of this, recognizing patterns that would take humans far too long to find. It's like having an incredibly patient assistant who can comb through a mountain of information without getting tired or missing any details. This is crucial because the signals we're looking for are often buried in noise, tiny variations that could be easily overlooked. This exoplanet is just one piece of this giant puzzle. It's a fascinating piece, and the hints we're getting are tantalizing, but there's so much more to explore. There are thousands of exoplanets out there, each with its own story. Some of them are too hot, some are too cold, but some might be just right. And it's not just about temperature or distance from a star. It's about all the little things that come together to create an environment where life could take hold. The more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. That's what makes this journey so exciting. Every time we discover something new, it opens up more questions. It's a reminder that the universe is full of surprises and that we're only just beginning to scratch the surface. Whether or not we find life on this planet, the fact that we're even capable of detecting these faint signals, analyzing them, and debating what they might mean is a testament to human curiosity and ingenuity. Maybe in the coming years, we'll get more data that points us clearly in one direction or another. Maybe we'll find new ways to study these distant worlds that will give us definitive answers. Until then, we keep watching, we keep listening, and we keep wondering. Because at the end of the day, that's what science is all about. Asking questions, seeking answers, and never giving up on the quest to understand the cosmos and our place within it. Does K218b harbor more than just algae beneath its waves waiting to be discovered? Share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more.